This snippet is Adding and Applying Behaviors. My name is Jeremy Osborne, presenting from AGI Training from Microsoft. In this snippet, you'll learn how to add and apply behaviors to your Beehive game in Expression Blend 3. Behaviors are a new feature in Expression Blend 3, and they allow you to add pre-created packages of code that allow you to save time and eliminate the need to write the code needed to carry out basic tasks. For example, here in our Beehive game, there are a number of elements that have to fall into place for the game to work. For example, the code that allows the paddle to follow the user's mouse or functionality to save a player's high score is not something most people want to do from scratch. Additionally, these behaviors can be similar from one game to another. Even though the game mechanics might be different, adding behavior code that has been thoroughly tested gives you one less thing to worry about. Now, when it comes to behaviors, there's really two categories. Go ahead and click on the Assets tab here, and then click on the Behaviors subcategory. There are a number of default or pre-installed behaviors that come with Expression Blend. In our case, we're going to be adding custom behaviors. Now, one thing I should point out, we'll be adding these behaviors. Technically, they would require an additional step, which is to add an assembly reference. We won't be looking at that in this snippet, although we do have documentation on this in the guide that accompanies the snippet. So for now, go ahead and click on the Projects tab, and then right-click on the Beehive project up top and choose Add Existing Item. Now we need to navigate to the Beehive folder in the Project folder associated with the snippet. We'll see here that there are a number of files with the extension .cs. We're going to go ahead and Control-click these and add them to our project. So Control-click the following files. Collision.cs, Follow Mouse, Game Environment, High Score, Last Score, Lives, Motion, and Score. Then go ahead and choose Open. And we'll now see within the Projects tab that all these files have been added. In order to make these behaviors available to the project, choose Project, Rebuild. When the build succeeds, let's go back and click on the Assets tab. And we should now see within our Behaviors subcategory, we have a number of new behaviors that we just added. Now let's go ahead and start applying these. The first thing we want to do is add the Game Environment behavior to our Layout route. But first, let's change our Layout route by right-clicking it and choosing Change Layout Type to Canvas. This just makes our behaviors a little bit more stable and usable. Now let's go ahead and add the Game Environment behavior to the Layout route by clicking on it and then dragging on top. Once we do that, we can see that the Game Environment behavior has been added, and we can also see that it's indented underneath the Layout route, which means it's been applied. This game environment behavior includes a lot of rules that make this game work. Included in these are things such as collision detection. But now, we're going to go ahead and add some behaviors to the elements within our game. The first thing we're going to do is add the follow mouse behavior to the paddle. This means whenever the user moves the mouse, the paddle will follow. In order to do that, let's locate the follow mouse behavior and click and drag it on top of the paddle within the objects and timeline. Again, we can see that it's indented. And additionally, if we look on the right-hand side of the screen, we can see that there's now some properties that have been exposed. Particularly, we're looking at the mouse properties. If we look at the follow position property, we want to make sure that this is set to X. So X is horizontal or moving from left to right. Let's go ahead and test this by choosing Project, Run Project. Now when the user moves the mouse, we should see the paddle move from left to right. And this lets us know that that follow mouse behavior is working. Now let's go ahead and close this. We also need to add collision behavior to the paddle so that when the ball hits it, it also understands that it needs to bounce off. So in order to do that, go into the Behaviors category and then click and drag Collision on top of Paddle. In the Properties section, go ahead and check this item, Collide with All, located under the Collision Properties. Now let's add behavior to the ball. Go ahead and select the ball by clicking Ball in the Objects and Timeline panel and then locate the motion behavior and drag and drop it on top of the ball. Here we need to set the behavior of the ball. So in order to do that, let's locate direction and type minus 65. For speed, go ahead and type 10 and then press return. Now in general, the motion behavior will set the ball in motion once the user clicks on it. And then these motion properties change the direction as well as the speed. So in this case, minus 65 means that ball will move up and to the right. We also need to add the collision behavior. So locate that collision behavior, and then drag and drop it on top of the ball. Again, go over to the Properties section, and now locate the Change Properties section. Click on the Action menu, 
and choose this option, Motion Change Direction. We want to test this within the game. So you'll notice here that our honeycomb is located above and to the right of the ball. That means that once the ball launches, it will automatically hit that honeycomb. However, we first need to enable that honeycomb for collision as well. So go ahead and click on that honeycomb once to select it. And let's go ahead and give this a good name by going into the Properties tab and typing Honeycomb01. Now go ahead and drag and drop the collision behavior on top of that honeycomb. And within the Properties tab, let's look at the Action menu, click Visibility, and then type the following value. Be very careful about the case. Use a capital C and then type Collapsed. Once you type Collapsed, press Return. Additionally, within the Collision Properties, click on the Collide with All checkbox. So the combination of these properties essentially instructs the honeycomb to disappear when it's hit. Let's go ahead and test our application by pressing F5. And then once the game appears, go ahead and click on the ball. It will bounce and it will hit the honeycomb. Now, of course, the ball disappears off screen because we haven't created any walls yet. The next step, of course, would be to add these walls and give them collision behavior as well. However, for now, we've had a chance to look at how to add behaviors in Expression Blend. Thank you. This is Jeremy Osborne presenting from AGI Training for Microsoft.